Um, hi, uh, I want today to make a short video about my thoughts on the Israel-Palestine situation, Zionism and some related subjects. Now uh, the first thing I think we need to look at is how the area defined as Palestine was created. Um, basically in 1916 during the First World War uh, much of the Arab world was essentially under the control of the Ottoman Empire and they fought on the side of the Germans in that war and during that time the people of the Arab world basically revolted and attempted to gain some independence. Uh, now I'm not going to go into too much detail on that subject um, but basically um, they lost the war uh, and after they lost the empire was broken down um, uh, into separate areas called mandates which were basically given to France and to Britain to look after uh, this former territory of the Ottoman Empire. So lines were drawn on a map and the region was divided into these mandates controlled by France and Britain. Um, I believe France had Syria and Lebanon, uh, and Britain had Iraq, uh, which was then called Mesopotamia, uh, Egypt, parts of Jordan, Yemen, Oman, and the Mandate of Palestine. Um, these mandates were supposed to be transitional periods uh, towards independence, but Britain held on to them for quite a while, probably because of the vast natural resources they offered. Now. It's worth noting that many view the Holocaust as the driving factor behind Zionism or as the main excuse for a mass Jewish emigration to Palestine. Um, but I feel this is not true because uh, from the beginning of the mandate Palestine's history, uh, there was already talk of the land being used to establish a Jewish national home. Um, after the war though, it spurned many to move on there and obviously kind of crystallised the Zionist ideology, gave them a sense of justification or unity. And that culminated uh, at the end of the Israeli War of Independence in 1948. Now, what we need to understand is that Israel in its current form is essentially a colonial state. Uh, now, there are two forms of colonial state, uh, the kind we saw in India and South Africa on the one hand, and the kind we saw in America and Australia and the other. Uh, the first, the kind we saw in India and South Africa, is essentially composed of a minority foreign ruling class controlling the majority indigenous population and exploiting them for their labour power. Uh, the second, which we saw in Australia and America, involved a colonial people invading and seizing the territory and expelling, massacring, or just generally sidelining, marginalising the indigenous people. So in South Africa, they used the natives for cheap labour, and in Australia, they all but eradicated them and basically um, subjected them to little kind of um, reservations, I suppose the word is. <clears throat> now, Israel belongs to the second type, um, because the Zionist foreign elements um, expelled the native Palestinians or marginalised them uh, from their own land and you know what is the Gaza Strip or the Occupy Territories if not just big reservations um, where they are you know there's so you can find out the kind of shit that happens to you if you're a Palestinian in those areas you know your rights are violated constantly you might be spied on you might be killed randomly you have to go through humiliating checkpoints um, that's a whole nother story, but it's bad shit. Now, uh, one thing to kind of note about this is that, in this sense, um, the early history of the USA and of Israel actually have quite potent similarities. Both were colonies set up by the British Empire. Both fought a war of independence um, against that empire. Um, and, well, in case of Israel, they also fighting against the kind of native people, but um, that's similar to the USA's kind of war against the Native Americans that they had. Um, now, um, yeah, so both fought a war of independence and then expelled the native population and expanded their control under the auspices of Manifest Destiny, uh, both claiming that this expansionism was God's will. However, there is an important difference between Palestine and the Native Americans uh, or Aborigines of Australia and America. Palestine is part of a greater Arab nation. 
sharing language, race and religion with millions of others in the surrounding regions. Um, the Native Americans of Australia and America had different localised languages and religions uh, and really had no means of organising or uniting and not to mention they were actually severely outgunned by these colonial powers. So the way I see it, the Arab world is in fact suffering from the hangover of imperialism and colonialism and divided into little autocratic blocks or monarchies um, or sec secular dictatorships um, which have divided the Arab people and weakened them. And these divisions that I speak of are the result of bourgeois nationalism. This nationalism serves no useful purpose to the working class of the Arab world. It is a system that maintains the power for certain sections of Arab society, um, but it weakens the Arab people as a whole. Uh, Arab unity, on the other hand, is of no interest to the bourgeoisie. In fact, they fear it and fear losing their stranglehold on the working people and therefore losing their wealth and their power and their control. Yeah, the only way I see of freeing Palestine is by its reunification with the Arab nation and only the working class of the Arab world has the ability or the inclination to carry this out. And to do this they must seek to rise above extreme Islamism of um, Hamas or Hezbollah. Um, they must try and bridge the gaps, whatever divisions they have between um, Sunni and Shiite um, and whatever discriminations they may have against you know the differences between Arab, Christians, Muslims and Jews because forget not that about one in ten Arabs is a Christian so that's you know that's a lot of people um, and quite a lot of them are Jews as well and that doesn't mean they necessarily support uh, Zionism. I mean, one thing that really pisses me off is um, if you're against Israel, you're anti-Semitic. Well, you know, there are plenty of Jews out there who are against um, Israel, uh, either on religious or kind of moral grounds, and I'm of Jewish descent. I, I'm an atheist, but I have Jewish ancestors, so I'm not anti-Semitic in any way. Um, now, as well as kind of bridging these kind of cultural differences, um, they must strive towards a kind of republican democracy um, of the kind seen by Kautsky and not the kind of uh, appropriated by the US or Europe, so kind of in the revolutionary sense. And we should also campaign for transitional demands. Um, basically, I do mean this in the kind of the Trotskyist sense, though I'm not Trotsky, i.e. Um, demands that they can't meet but are complete or refuse to meet but are justified. So in this I call for a return for the a return by Israel to the nineteen sixty seven borders, um, and an end to the military occupation of those areas. Um, an end by the West to military aid to Israel. Uh, and of course the right of return to all Palestinians and equal national rights within the territory as a first step. But what we also must accept is that there is a Hebrew Jewish race in the region who are entitled to equal national rights as are Kurds, Berbers, Assyrians and others. And this right would of course include uh, freedom from discrimination and favouritism, um, the right to self-rule and secession so within a greater Arab nation we could have Hebrew, Kurdish or Assyrian autonomous regions where those people form a majority. Now with the right of return for uh, Palestinians the Israeli majority areas would of course be much smaller. Um, the reason I talk of this of these equal national rights for Israelis is um, you know, what's the point of ending a colonial rule only to repeat the same horrors um, which the colonial powers inflicted upon the native people? Uh, we don't want to see a repeat of the killings of whites in South Africa and Zimbabwe. Um, you know, it's... I would, it basically, you know, what's the point of struggling against uh, the Zionist bourgeois class of Israel if you're only going to do the exact same thing that they're trying to do to you? You know, um, we didn't, the, the Jews didn't respond to the Holocaust by massacring all Germans. Um, 
but they did respond this way, which is wrong. So we don't want to follow that example of the Zionism, not, not necessarily Jews, as I said before. Um, so, you know, the struggle for a pe uh, free Palestine should be one for equal rights and justice and not for genocide or ethnic cleansing. Um, because, as I said, it's the Israeli bourgeoisie and not the working class who are spearheading this kind of Zionist project. And I repeat what I said. Um, Israel should end its military occupation, return to the 1967 borders, and allow the right of return for Palestinians as a first step. Palestinians and all Arabs should seek to overthrow their own bourgeois class and move towards a unified Arab state. Um, and should they achieve this, Kurdish, Hebrew, Assyrian and Berber autonomous regions should be created um, and all the people of the region should be endowed with equal national rights. So, you know, that's kind of my opinion on the subject. Um, basically, I believe that, um, you know, Palestine is an oppressed nation and we should always side with it as communists or as Marxists in its struggle. But, um that doesn't mean we should you know, you know we should oppose the idea of ejecting every single israeli or murdering every single israeli otherwise what's the point you know we're again we're against ethnic nationalism um in that sense um you know we're uh, i'm for the idea of an arab unity in the sense that it would benefit the arab working class um, and give them more power and more independence, whereas in the current state it just weakens them um, and imprisons them in all these various, like I say, little dictatorships, um, you know, little autocratic regions. Uh, so we should call for um, an Arab unification. I mean, the other thing you have to note is that with the end of the Zionist state of Israel, um, I'm pretty sure most of the Zionist Israelis will probably leave. Um, maybe. Who knows? But, yeah. So, that, that's just kind of my opinion. Um, so, I'll try, I'll try and kind of think more deeply on this in the future and do a more detailed video. But, uh, thanks for listening.